For this talk, I'm going to discuss the anatomy of the glenohumeral joint, commonly known as the shoulder joint, and I'm actually going to use bones that have been donated to me. So I'm very thankful that I can use something to actually teach from. Okay, now if I place the humerus bone against the scapula and place them together, so this will be known as the, the shoulder joint, but it's actually known as the glenohumeral because if I look inside here, this is the glenoid fossa, so the glenohumeral humerus will be the components of the shoulder joint. And it is a typical ball and socket joint. We have planes in flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, plus also horizontal motion as well. Let's look at the bony landmarks to start with, and I'm gonna choose the humerus. So we're gonna start with the head. So this is the head of the humerus in here, and then this will articulate within the glenoid fossa. And it's like a golf ball on a tee, if you can visualize that. And only part of the head will actually sit on that T, okay, which is naturally the, the socket in you. So it's relatively unstable as compared to the hip, and that's why we have muscles like the rotator cuff that provide some stability. From the head, moving round, we've actually got two necks with the humerus. So we've got this neck, which is known as the surgical neck, obviously it goes all the way around. Okay, and then if I come down across here, then this is known as the surgical neck. So we've got two necks associated to the humerus. Now, Coming across here, there is a groove along here, and then this groove is between two tubercles. So this would be known as the lesser tubercle. You can also call it the tuberosity as well, depending on what book you read. And the subscapularis will attach here, which is the main internal rotator. On this one here, this is known as the greater tubercle, or the greater tuberosity, and that's where the supraspinatus will attach. In between, think of a word in, okay, so inter tubercle, tubercular, sulcus, which is a depression here, like a fossa. This is also known as the bicipital groove because the long head of bicep will come down through here, okay? It actually comes and attaches from the supraglenoid tubercle, just in here, part of the labrum, the superior labrum, just in here. And if you tear that, they call it a slap lesion. So the superior labrum, anterior to posterior on here. So the bicep long head will come down and obviously the short head will meet it, and then it will attach to the radial tuberosity of the elbow. This area just here, it says deltoid actually, is already written down. So this is the deltoid tuberosity or tubercle, and it's where the deltoid muscle will attach. I'm only going to do the proximal humerus. I will leave the distal humerus for another video. Okay, let's move on to the scapula. So there are many muscles attaching, but we'll do muscles in a separate video. This one is just more for the bony landmarks. So if we look here, we've got an angle. So this is known as the inferior angle. And basically, like latissimus dorsi will cross over here. We've also got the superior angle on here. This little bit, this area here. And that's where the levator scapulae will attach from C1 to C4 along here. If I drop down from the superior angle into this ridge area here, okay, well the ridge is here, but then this is the depression. So this would be known as the supraspine fossa in here. So you probably guess that supraspinatus will sit within this fossa. This is the spine of the scapula along here, the spine of the scapula, and that's a landmark you can use. So think supraspine, supraspinatus, so obviously below infraspine, infraspinatus will sit in this infraspinous fossa here. You can see it's almost drawn, okay, along here. If I stay with the spine and continue, so this would be known as the acromion, and then this ridge line here would be known as the acromion process, and just below it will be the subacromial space where many people will have a subacromial decompression typically because they've got some form of impingement or calcification on, on the supraspinatus tendon or even the bursa. But also, typically, this should be relatively flat, but it can also be slightly curved or even hooked. They call it type 1, type 2 acromion in here. Now, we've got a couple of borders I want to discuss. So this would be known as the lateral border along here, also known as the auxiliary border, and it provides the attachments of the teres minor and the teres major. Latissimus crosses it here, okay, so minor and major. 
on our gif. But it is an infraglenoid tubicle where the tricep long head attaches just on this area in here. And then we have a medial or vertebral border where the rhomboid minor will come down and rhomboid major. They'll be from C7 to T1 for minor and T2 to T5 for major along here. Turn it over. So we've got the anterior surface. So this is the subscapular fossa. You probably guessed what muscle. The subscapularis will attach and that will go to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. And then we have this beak-like projection known as the coracoid process. Okay, so this little tip in here. And there are three muscles which attach to that. The bicep short head. Okay, we know where the long head attaches onto the supraglenoid tubercle. We've also got pectoralis minor from a third to the fifth rib coming up. And then we've also got a muscle called the coracobrachialis. Coraco, coracoid, brachii, arm. So you probably guess where it's going to go to. Okay, so that's the majority of the bony landmarks, if not all, for the scapula and for the proximal humerus. And it all relates to the shoulder joint. I hope you've enjoyed watching the lesson on the anatomy of a shoulder joint. Thank you.